Hi, I'm Carol Wilson, Editor-at-Large at Light Reading, and I'm here with J.P. Hemingway, the CEO of SES. And let me start by asking, so your, your presence here at MAF, uh, are you the only satellite company that comes here? And, and what's, what's the importance of this event for you? I think we are the only satellite uh, operator that's here. There's a couple of technology vendors who work with us as partners, but okay. I think we're the only ones here who operate Operate's a satellite network. Okay. Um, we just basically want to change people's perception. You know, we think okay. for too long satellites always been the very edge of the network that nobody thinks they need to automate or integrate or make seamless, and we want to change that. Okay. Because if you're going to really connect everyone that we think needs connecting, you're going to have to orchestrate in the same way, have the same standards delivered across terrestrial and satellite seamlessly. Okay. And that's what we're trying to achieve here, so that our use cases are thought about about how we deliver that and these great ecosystems we see here right. are considering our use cases, not just the classic terrestrial ones. Okay, so what does it mean to SES to be um, MEF 2.0 certified? Because I think you're also the only satellite operator with that distinction, correct? We are, uh, and it's actually one of the, the things that we really pushed hard to do. Um, and it was actually interesting for SES Networks to, to, as a company, go, why are we doing this? Because it was brand new. Mm -hmm. The consideration, why are you applying for, what, what is MEF? And then right, why are you applying right. for the certification? And it's part of the transformation from a pure capacity provider to a fully managed service provider. Okay. And when you provide fully managed services, we want to trust they do what you say they'll do. Right. So having something that says, even though it's over satellite, you should think about it as any part of your network. Wow. Okay. So our telco customers who want to roll out a global network, right. they've got their on-net services, which are MEF certified, and they've got to go off-net by partnering with us the entire end-to-end -end service is now MEF certified. Okay. And that's a huge deal and a big, big differentiator for us in the market. That's got to help with, with, with them actually being able to deploy services more quickly as well, I'm assuming. Exactly, because again, when satellite is thought as this special niche hand-engineered right. solution right. off right. the end of a network, yeah. people have got to test it, they've got to get into labs, they've got to do these things. If they want to extend from Adelaide to one of the islands off Australia, which we do with Telstra, for example, they just say, if it's MEF, it's going to work. Okay. Just deploy it. Okay. Well, that's a, one good example. Can you give me other good examples of carriers, or, or sorry, of customers or partners that are using Carrier Ethernet 2.0 to extend their, the, net, the reach of their networks? Yeah. So Telstra was a good one we used before because it extends off net and we're actually productized within their, their playbook, if you like, to extend their network. Okay. Um, other ones would be TIM in Brazil, so okay. Telecom Italian Mobile in Brazil. They're using the fact that it's certified to underpin the LTE backhaul performance that they expect. So they're using oh, fiber wow. where okay. they have fiber. Okay. They're using uh, our O3B certified services where they don't have fiber. Okay. So that's uh, another good example. And another, I, I assume there's a major cost issue there where they can do it more, more quickly, more cost effectively with satellite than time to, to market. Fiber. and where they're trying to roll out to, either for universal service obligations or okay. just where they want to roll out. Okay. A fiber could take three, six, nine, or even 12 months to get there. Okay. We can turn up as soon as we can uh, ship a, an equipment or a dish to there, we can be up within weeks, days, or, or, or months at the outside. Okay. So it's a huge time to market advantage. That makes sense. Um, okay, great. So. Um, where you're looking at, one of the themes here has been automation. Um, tell me a little bit about what your, what your challenges are there and what you're looking at trying to do. Sure, so we started with uh, standardization, which is the MEF 2.0 certification, okay. and that helps people trust what they're delivering. But if we really want to react to people wanting cloud connectivity on demand, or we want to be able to flex bandwidth up and, up and down for 4G and certainly for 5G in the future, okay. we have to react to the same systems that control terrestrial networks as well as seamlessly into, into satellite systems. So we need to make sure we've got the right control engines, we've got the right APIs exposed, and ultimately we take part in ecosystems that we see here so that when we're rolling out mobile edge compute and we want to deliver a, a, a network function down to, to be host of that edge compute node, okay. it shouldn't matter that it's over satellite. We can still spin up the capacity, guarantee it for a certain period of time, uh, launch the NFV down to the, the mobile edge compute, and then spin down the capacity it shouldn't really matter that it's on satellite. It should work just like it's over fiber. So getting in these forums that, mm -hmm. that MEF operate and mm -hmm. make sure that they look end to end, fiber, um, maybe from microwave, but certainly satellite, and said this is going to be how people build the next generation of architectures. So it has to be seamless. What does MEF 3.0 mean for SES? I think for me, we have to keep abreast of what MEF is evolving towards. Okay. So when you look at uh, MEF evolve beyond its carry Ethernet is going to be trusted, and then they start adding things like LSO to make sure that we can also control and orchestrate circuits down the line, right. we have to evolve with that as well. So we're certainly working close with MEF right now to see when does it make sense to get our services MEF 3.0 certified, okay. and we're certainly involved with things like LSO and in other forums like ONAP, 
to make sure that we can be part of that control system. Okay. What does the 5G opportunity look like for you, or, or, or is it a 5G challenge? How would you characterize that? It's a great question. Um, 5G, we often get asked about, is it a threat? Because mm -hmm. is 5G going to be used to connect everywhere? And ultimately, I'm sure there will be 5G used to connect some IoT applications, mm -hmm. as an example. But ultimately, whether it's IoT with LoRa or IoT with 5G, or 5G actually as 5G handsets, uh -huh. that's going to drive a huge densification of cell towers. Yeah. And I don't sure. care if it's in a city, because rolling out new fiber in, that, in a really dense urban city is hard, mm -hmm. or whether that's on the edge of cities or in truly rural areas, you have to consider every way to connect there. And we think with our virtual fiber networking, mm -hmm. with the sort of MEO low latency fiber-like satellite, it has to be a completely viable alternative to get to the market quicker. So basically you become the backhaul piece of the 5G We become network. backhaul and there's this talk about latency and surely you can't do that latency over satellite, but arguably you can't do that latency over fiber as well. And okay. the latency is about the air interface to the handset. Right. And what right. it's going to drive is content right out to the edge. Right. And satellite's a great way to update that content even in a broadcast manner. So okay. I think we've got a really neat solution for this and we're working on a whole bunch of industry forums right now and test beds to, to prove that. Okay, well great. Well JP, thanks for being here with me today. No, thank you.